In this Autodesk Maya tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a quad ball in an animation rig that has squash and stretch. This animation rig is scalable and can be reused in other projects. The first thing to do is bring in a platonic solid. Using a platonic solid is a great way to make a quad ball. Then click on the attribute editor. On the third tab of polyplatonic, we can choose a cube for our primitive. Then we can make the subdivisions up to three and we have a sphere. The great thing about this is it's still one unit, so that means I can just translate up in the Y direction one, and it's locked on the bottom of the grid. So now we have a perfect sphere that is a quad ball. If you have an earlier version of Maya, you can still create a quad ball by clicking on cube and then smoothing it a couple times. The problem with this is it becomes smaller, and therefore if we click on this cube and then we try to translate it up one, it just isn't in the right space. So if I move this one to the side, you can see that one is floating in the air. And so while it works, it's not the best, best way. So now I'm gonna open up my outliner and I'm gonna delete the cube that I made and I'm gonna keep the polyplatonic. So let's rename this to ball. And now we can create our controllers for our rig. To do that, we'll go to the curved surfaces shelf and we'll create a nerve circle. And we're going to change the radius in the attribute editor to two. We're gonna label this circle main controller. Then we'll make one more circle and we'll change the radius of this circle to 1.5. We'll click on NURB circle one on the left and we'll translate it up in the Y direction one. So that way it's centered on the ball. Then we'll rename it to squash controller. Now we have our squash controller. We need one more controller for the rotation of the ball when we animate. So click on a circle. And then in the attributes, let's translate it up one. And then we're gonna rotate it in the X direction, negative 90. So now you can see it around the ball there, but let's make it a little bigger. So we'll change the radius to 1.2. Now we can see that very easily. And we need to rename it. So let's label this rotate controller. And now let's shift click in the outliner, rotate controller, squash controller, main controller, and ball. And then we're going to edit delete by type history, and then modify freeze transformations. Now what I wanna do is apply a material to the ball. I'll assign a blend, and then we can give it a checker pattern. Press six on your keyboard to see it. Uh, you can see since this is a quad ball, this checker pattern maps on a little bit differently, but for the most part, we wanna be able to put textures on the front of this, and we'll be able to modify our UV mapping much easier with a quad ball than a sphere. Both have their use cases, so just choose a sphere or a quad ball depending on what you want to do. Now we need to click on the ball and go to Deform Nonlinear Squash. Now we have a squash deformer, but we don't have all the attributes over here, so we need to click on Squash One Handle in the outliner. That brings up one more tab here. So click on Squash One Handle. We're going to change the Y translation to zero, so now it's on the ground. Then we click on squash one. We need to change some of these. So the low bound is perfect at zero, but we need to change the high bound to two. And now if we change our factor, we can see our squash and stretch happening. Let's put this back to zero. Now let's click on the squash controller. We need to go to the channel box. If you don't see your channel box, you can click on the box at the top right of your screen. If you've never used it before, it will be floating. Then we can dock it right over here by hovering until we see a blue line. So now we have the channel box editor docked here. And what we need to do on the squash controller is add a new attribute. So click on edit, add attribute. And for this attribute, I'm going to type squash attribute. This way I know it's the attribute and not the controller. And then on the minimum properties, we're gonna type negative 0.5 and then 0.5. This way, the squash and stretch doesn't get out of control. And then we press OK. But right now, this doesn't do anything. If I change this to one, nothing happens. So what I wanna do is put it at zero, and we need to connect the squash controller to the squash handle. To do that, highlight the squash controller in your outliner. Then go to Windows, General Editors, Connection Editor. Here on the left-hand side, we wanna choose what is going to be the controller, and it's the squash attribute. This is going to be driving what happens. Then we click on the squash handle, and then we need to make sure over on the right, we click on squash one under inputs, 
Then we reload to right. So the squash attribute on the left will be driving the factor on the right. Once I click this, a connection is made and you can see that with the yellow box right here. So I can close this window. Now, if I go to the squash controller and I change the squash attribute to 0.5, it now squashes or stretches. I can put that back to zero. And just so you know, on any of these attributes over here, I can click on it and then hover my mouse in the viewport, hold the control key plus middle mouse button, and I can drag it. This is a very convenient way to alter these properties. Now what we have to do is make a parenting hierarchy so we have our rig that works completely. To do that, in the outliner, click on squash handle, then with your middle mouse button, drag it into squash controller. Then click on the ball and middle mouse button drag it into the rotate controller. Then click on squash controller and middle mouse button into main controller. Then click on rotate controller and middle mouse button into main controller. If you look in the screen, I can still click on the ball. We don't wanna do that. We want to use the controllers to animate. So what we can do is in our channel box editor, click this far right icon after selecting the ball. This will put it into a layer. We can label the layer and then give it a color and save. And then right next to the color, we wanna click this box twice until it says R. This R is for reference. And that means that we can't click on anything in this scene. Uh, we can click on the controllers, but we can't click on the ball, which is great. And finally, if we twirl out our hierarchy, we want to make it easier to animate. So on the main controller, all this is doing is scale and translate because this rig is fully scalable. If you need a bigger ball, just scale up the main controller, but we're not going to rotate. So we can shift select all the rotate and then right click, lock and hide selected. So that means you're not even tempted to animate the rotate and it makes the interface cleaner. Let's go on the squash controller. On the squash controller, we are not gonna rotate and we're not gonna translate and we're not gonna scale. So let's shift click all of these, right click, lock and hide selected. So now we just have the squash attribute. Then on the rotate controller, we're not gonna translate. So right click, lock and hide selected. And then we're not gonna scale either, we're just rotating. So right click, lock and hide selected. So now we have a perfect ball rig that we can save and then import into other projects or use as a reference in other projects. And we can scale the whole thing. If I click on main controller, press R to scale, I scale it up to the size of the ball that I want. I can still use the squash controller, click on the squash attribute, hold down control and middle mouse button, and everything will still work. And then I can use the rotate controller and the texture will rotate right on that squash while keeping everything deformed properly. So this is a great way to have your rig all set up with squash and stretch and use it in your animation project. Remember, we want to save the rig as its own file and edit its attributes in here, and then have our animation scene have the rig as a reference file. That way we have redundancy in case our rig breaks.